Standing a short distance from Khufu's enormous tomb is ancient Egypt's second wonder, the Sphinx. One of the largest sculptures ever created. Built around 4,500 years ago, an instantly identifiable icon of this celebrated civilization. Ancient stonemasons carved the wonder directly from the limestone bedrock. But the enigmatic Sphinx is still shrouded in mystery. Unlike almost every other Egyptian monument, there are no hieroglyphic inscriptions proclaiming the name of the pharaoh who builds it. The head of the Sphinx is bigger than the head of the Statue of Liberty. It's carved from layers of ancient limestone and towers 65 feet above the desert sand. It has a massive body, as long as a jumbo jet, and under hundreds of protective limestone tiles. Its gigantic paws stretch out longer than a dumper truck. The identity of who carves this masterpiece is one of the most enduring debates in Egyptology. Whose face tops the most recognizable statue in ancient Egypt? Surprisingly, the steep-sided hollow that the Sphinx sits in offers the best clue. Egyptologist Mark Lehner believes the Egyptians dig down to create the Sphinx, removing thousands of tons of stone to shape the statue's massive body. Today, the steep-sided pit walls that surround the Sphinx still bear the ancient scars of this mammoth excavation. You have to imagine what it looked like. This entire volume of quarry was being worked. Blocks were being taken away in the form of, you know, massive stones, 100 tons in weight. Mark believes finding these quarried stones is the key to revealing who builds the Sphinx. He suspects the blocks don't go far. These ruins that sit at the paws of the Sphinx are once lavish temples built by the great pharaoh Khafra. Mark is convinced the same pharaoh creates both the Sphinx and the temples at the same time. I think they must have taken the stones from the quarry that made the Sphinx and move them directly to the front for making the temple. Mark works with fossil expert Richard Redding to search for geological signatures hidden within the stone blocks. The thickness of the different colored layers and the types of fossils they contain give each block a unique fingerprint. What do you see in there, Richard, in this yellow marley band? Well, it's a lot of fossils. We do have a number here. Here, up right here, that's a spiny oyster shell right there. And we've got a bunch of pneumolites, these coin-shaped things. There's very nice. After years of work, Mark now has a unique fingerprint for every block in this temple. To show the temple and the Sphinx are built at the same time by the same pharaoh, he hopes to match the temple stones back to the locations they are cut from around the Sphinx. First, Mark compares the thickness of the layers to see if he can find a perfect match with any of the temple blocks. I'm just a little further on and I'm getting, yeah, well, about 75. The layers are a good match. But to seal the deal, Richard looks to see if the fossils match, too. That is another spiny oyster. The spiny oyster, which matches perfectly our block down there. You've got a lot of the small pneumolites, hardly any of the large pneumolites. So uh, yeah, this, is a, this fossil community is very, very similar to what we were looking at down at the Sphinx Temple. So it's a good match. There is still work to do, but these findings suggest that Mark's theory is correct. 
every stone in the temple is originally quarried from the sides of the Sphinx. Using this methodical approach, Mark believes he can match each and every block in the temple to their original position inside the Sphinx enclosure. Two blocks from the front wall of the temple match the mid-chest of the Sphinx. The geological layers and the fossils inside them are the same. More blocks from the temple perfectly align with the floor of the Sphinx enclosure. And the matches keep on coming. Layer after layer of stone completely filling the quarry. Identifying the source of these temple blocks provides irrefutable evidence of which pharaoh builds this monument. So if Khafre built the Sphinx temple, it had to have been Khafre who made the Sphinx because they were part of the same process. Mark believes he's finally ended the debate about the builder of this Egyptian wonder. Khafre tops his mega sphinx with a colossal carving of his own face. He is the son of the mighty pharaoh Khufu, the builder of the Great Pyramid. Khafre creates a projection of power like no other to rival his own father's towering tomb.